welcome back to my channel. Um, it has been way too long since I filmed a proper YouTube video that wasn't travel related or a vlog, but it is high time that I am back and I'm so excited because I am kicking it off with a brand new series on my channel called The Style Studio. <music> new to this channel and don't know who I am, my name is Madison. I am a blogger, Instagram creator, style enthusiast, fashion inspired person, and also high school fashion design teacher. I've decided that with everything going on in the world and all of the time I have been spending working on super fun projects, design projects, fashion design, and sewing, I should just film videos about it so that you all can follow along and see what I'm doing learn some tips and tricks of your own or maybe hopefully my main goal is for you all to get inspired and so I thought what better time to put together some videos to show everyone what I'm working on because if we're being honest I spend most of my time in quarantine in my studio which if you're wondering yes it is a kayak behind me because my studio is in the garage and yes it is about 85 degrees in here but we're just gonna roll with it uh, so this is my studio where I create design and make things that make me happy and it's high time that I share all of that with you all. So I'm so excited about this new series because I'm going to dive into all of my favorite hobbies which all center around fashion and share that passion that I have with you all, taking you behind the scenes to see projects I'm working on, original designs, how to get inspired for yourself, learn some tips and tricks for sewing your own clothes, and also take you on some adventures where we're going to recycle and redesign things to make something new. So welcome to the adventure and let's dive into designing. All right guys, we're gonna dive right into the first project of my Style Studio series, which is part of the Recycle and Redesign collection. So what do I mean by Recycle and Redesign? What I mean by it is taking things that previously existed and recycling them into something new or redesigning it into a new piece, a new silhouette or outfit. So for recycling projects, most of the time I'm going to be using fabric from other things, such as bed sheets, curtains, tablecloths, you name it. For the redesign challenges, I'm going to take something that already existed as a piece of clothing or something super useful and redesigning it into something new, thus giving it new life. So recycling and redesigning challenges are really great, one, because it saves you a lot of money when it comes to projects and fabric and supplies, and two, when you're thinking about the realms of ethical fashion and giving back to your environment and not, you know, creating carbon waste and all those things with the ethical fashion movement today, recycling and redesigning is one of the key things you can do. So if you are a thrifter, if you are someone who's just getting into sewing and don't want to spend a ton of money on fabric, these are going to be the types of challenges that you're going to want to dive into. And they are some of my favorite because I love using things that previously existed to make something new. So this first challenge we are going to be working on is creating a dress from a bed skirt. Um, bed skirts and sheets are some of my favorite things to use for projects because usually you can go buy them at the thrift store for like five dollars or less. You get a ton of yardage, you usually get fun prints, you save a lot of money and you bring new life to something. Um, I have so many dresses and outfits that are made out of tablecloths or sheets or curtains and so this project is no different but this is the first time I've actually used a bed skirt to create a project so I'm excited about all of the opportunities there. Um, so this is what it looks like. We're actually going to be using a bed skirt and like a curtain. So I bought them together at our local thrift store. And as soon as I thought, saw it, I thought that the fabric and the color was super, super fun. I'm really big into florals. Obviously it's spring right now. And so that's kind of been my whole inspiration for a lot of my designs recently. So this is the bed skirt. This is obviously the part that goes under your mattress and this is the ruffle. Now, the great thing about this and why I love it for a project is that it's already gathered, which means we can create a really awesome, roughly dressed without having to do the hard, tedious, frustrating, busy work of gathering. And I'm gonna show you all of those tips for this project, which is gonna be so much fun. And so it's actually a king size bed skirt. So there's so much yardage here for ruffles. So we're gonna take that into account for our design. And then there's already all this fabric, which means our dress already has a lining. So it's going to be super helpful and make our project go by so much faster. And then, like I said, the curtain was combined with it. And so this is what the curtain looks like. It was for like a bedroom that was this color and theme. And so we're gonna be using the curtain as the fabric for the bodice and the sleeves. Um, so this is going to be so awesome. I love this fabric. There's so much of it and there's so much potential here. So let's dive into designing and see what we come up with. 
All right, so this is my fashion sketchbook. I honestly have had it since high school and it's full of great designs and horrible designs and inspiration. And so this is what I typically sketch all of my designs in before I start to sew them. So we're gonna go ahead and just brainstorm ideas for what we want to create and what we want to design. Now, the reason why I love to start with a sketch is that it helps me to work out all of my different ideas because I could have a fabric and have three different ideas of the style I want to create. And if I were to just start sewing it, I might have to rip things out and change things along the way. But if I sketch it, I kind of get a visual of how it would look and it helps me to make a better idea. The other really great thing about sketching out your designs first is it helps you to figure out what types of pattern pieces you're going to need to draft along the way of creating it. And I'll be talking more about that as we go through the project. So obviously we have this really great floral um, with lots of greens, yellows, blues. It's great for spring, it's bold and it's colorful. Um, as you know, we are making this project out of a bed skirt. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that title up here and then we're gonna start working through that. All right. Now, like I said, this project is made out of a bed skirt. And so the great thing about it being a bed skirt is that there are already ruffles and um, gathers that are already created. So we're going to kind of use that as our inspiration. So we're going to think ruffles, flowiness, maybe some tiered panels for this design. Now, I have a previous design that I made earlier um, on from another piece of fabric that was very much um, like this. It had two different tiers of ruffles for the dress. I ended up adding sleeves to it and I really liked how it turned out. So we're going to kind of go with that same idea for this dress, but we're going to add even more ruffles since we have them and we might as well use them. So I originally sketched this dress to have a scoop neckline, but I ended up going in and changing that later on. This bodice of the dress also has two darts in the front and two darts in the back for a better fit and it really just gives it a very classic silhouette. And because we're working with ruffles, I decided to sketch them to be layered over each other so it's a very twirly and full skirt. Now there is a second design I could have created for this dress where the ruffle panels are actually sewn together, kind of giving it more of that boho type look, but I really liked the ruffles that were layered over each other to give it more volume. So that's what I ended up going with. Now, like I said, I ended up changing the bodice. So I changed it to be a very square neck bodice. These are super in fashion right now and I really love how flattering they look. And then the sleeves I sketched lay right on the shoulder and they're very ruffly and kind of resemble a flower petal. So I ended up changing that on my original design. Now, the reason I always sketch on my designs first is it helps me visualize my design along with planning the steps I need to take in the construction process, and it helps me to figure out all the pattern pieces I'm going to need to draft. So I would always encourage you to first start with a design. Now, because we have sketched our design first, it gives us a better idea of the pattern pieces we're going to need to make. So we're going to need a bodice piece, just like I'm sketching there, that we're actually going to use basically the exact same one for the back, and the bodice front is going to be cut on the fold. We're also going to need a sleeve pattern, and because it's a really roughly sleeve, it's going to be very long. And then we're going to need our ruffle panels, which we don't need a pattern piece for that, it's just going to be the actual ruffles off of the bed skirt. But I like to sketch out my pattern pieces to give me an idea of what I need to have for my project and what I will also need to draft. Alright, so today is officially day two of this design project and the day that we officially get to start cutting up this fabric and sewing it together. So excited! But before we do that, we need to get a little bit organized so that we save time and make less mistakes. And also so that we make sure this dress fits because the worst thing about a project is getting to the end and, and not fitting. So this is again the fabric we're using. We are using a bed skirt to make a dress. Super excited about this because of all of the ruffles. Um, so this is going to become the lining of the skirt. We're gonna have different tiers of the ruffles. We'll cut different aspects of this off and then like layer it on the skirt. And then this curtain, it's really not a curtain, it's a thing that goes at the very top. I don't even remember what those are called. But anyways, this is going to become our bodice and our sleeves. The great thing about this is that it's double-sided and layered. So whenever we cut out one piece, we're gonna automatically cut two because we're actually going to be lining our bodice on the inside front and inside back just to give it a more professional look at the end. So those are the pieces of fabric that we're going to be using. Now let's talk about how we actually get our pattern pieces from those. So every single seamstress and designer does it differently. Some people will use actual patterns. 
for kind of mix and match different pattern pieces from patterns they buy at the store and make like a Frankenstein thing. Anyways, some people can just like eyeball a shape and cut it out. I used to do that. I also used to kind of make my own pattern straight from scratch. But then once I went to college and took an apparel class, I learned all about slopers and that's what I use now because they are amazing. Now, if you're hearing the word sloper and you're wondering what in the world I'm talking about, slopers are the basic building blocks of every single other pattern you want to create or design. So let's say you want to make a princess themed dress with a circle skirt. You can take slopers and you can adapt them to make that style. So it takes out all of the guesswork for designs and the great thing about slopers is that they're made in specific sizes, whether it's standard sizing like size eight or size six or to your actual measurements. So when you use those slopers, the byproduct and the design at the end is automatically going to fit you. So these are the slopers that I have that I made when I was in college. Um, they're made to my actual size. So what I think I did is I combined a size six and a size eight to make my slopers, but this is the bodice back. So we will be tracing this out and then kind of cutting it to, do, to be a different size to fit the design and style of our bodice. Um, this is the bodice front and this is the sleeve. Now these are the only three slopper pieces you'll be using for this project. The skirt, we don't actually need a pattern piece. So the great thing about skirts is that for most skirts, if they aren't a circle skirt, you don't actually need a pattern piece because it's based all off of measurements, which is great. So fun fact, there's actually a lot of math and fashion. Um, I am not a mathy person, but when I sew, I feel really smart because I'm using my math skills. So for our skirt, we're just going to do measurements to create it and cut the shapes and sizes that we need. But for everything else, we are going to be using slopers. Now when using slopers, you're gonna need some type of paper to trace them onto. I just use this dollar store wrapping paper that works great because it's already gridded out into one inch sections. So I'm just gonna trace my bodice front and my bodice back. And once those are traced, we can make our adaptions so that it better fits our design. Now one thing about these slopers that I have is that the bodice front has a side dart and I don't want that for this design. So we're gonna to have to tweak that by pivoting and closing that side dart. And we do that by simply cutting out our pattern piece. Then we create a bus point or apex on our pattern piece, draw lines to connect that, and then all we have to do is cut to, not through, that bus point, and that helps us to pivot our side dart closed, tape it into place, which then opens up our center front dart. And after that, we just need to figure out how we want to create our square neckline, so you can mark on yourself and take a measurement of where you want that to fall, draw a line across the top of your bodice piece, and then cut it off. Just like the bodice front, we're gonna do the same thing to the bodice back to create that square back neckline. Now, after we have the bodice pieces, we are going to draft the sleeve. I have a sloper that I'm going to use to kind of get the general idea of the curve, and I also wanna measure my shoulder to figure out how long I actually want the sleeve. Once I've determined that, all I'm going to do is trace the top of my sloper, but then I'm just going to extend it extra long to make sure I have plenty of fabric for ruffles and a petal. Now I'm using a curved ruler and then I'm just going to sketch a curve along the top of the sleeve. And then once I complete half of the sleeve, I'm just gonna fold my paper in half so that I can trace it and mirror it to the other side. And that's basically it for the sleeve. It's super easy, especially with a ruffly petal sleeve that doesn't have to be really fitted. All right, so now we have our actual pattern pieces. We have the bodice front, the bodice back, which is very much the same thing. And then we have the sleeve, which looks super big, but we're actually going to be gathering along here. So once it's gathered and then sewn together, it'll be like one of those nice like petal roughly sleeves. Um, so one thing about your patterns, once you have them cut out or created, um, if you're doing darts, which I am doing and do literally in all of my designs, you can actually fold it over and then you can kind of like fit it to yourself to make sure that the dart placement is where you want it to be. And you can even kind of like size your pattern. Um, so I know that this fits really well. The one thing I'm going to want to do, because I did not add seam allowance to this, is make sure when I cut it, that I cut it an extra half an inch for seam allowance. Um, this up here is a seam allowance and then the bodice is going to go straight across. And this pattern marking means it'll be cut on the fold, so it'll actually be doubled. 
since we're using the bed skirt for our skirt sections, part of the white fabric is going to stay connected to the ruffles and then the rest of the ruffles are going to be cut off to be used later on as the overlays. Now the great thing about using bed skirts or tablecloths or curtains is that you're not going to have to hem anything if you use it wisely and cut it smart because everything is already hemmed, which is the case for this skirt. Now we're going to lay it out and I went ahead and measured how long I want this skirt to be from my natural waist to a mid calf since it's going to be a midi skirt and I decided I wanted to be about 31 inches so I'm going to make sure that I put those markings across the underskirt of my design to make sure that it's even all the way across. So after we do that, we're just going to fold it in half and then cut straight along the markings I already made. And then we're going to cut the excess ruffles off of the other part of the bed skirt and set those aside to use later on for our overlay panels. Now for the top layer, we don't actually want it to be gathered to start with since it will eventually be sewn to the top of the skirt and gathered to fit my waist, so we're just going to cut those gathers off of one section of ruffles. Now as I was doing this, I realized I cut the wrong gather off of the wrong piece. <gasps> no! Now because I cut the gathers off of the wrong section of ruffles, that means I'm just going to have to go in and gather it later on, which means I still have to cut the gathers off of the top section of ruffles that will be sewn to the top of the skirt later on in the project. And now we're going to get ready to cut out our bodice. Now the great thing about these curtains is that they're already doubled, so all I have to do is fold them in half one time, place my bodice on the fold, and then cut it out and I'll automatically get two pieces since we are going to be lining the bodice and the back. And after I cut it out, I'm also going to make sure to cut correct seam allowance on the side seams. Then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the back bodice. We're going to place it on the fabric, making sure that it's doubled because we need four pieces for the back. And this one is not cut on the fold, so we just need to make sure that it's placed on the grain line. All right, so next up we need to cut out our sleeve. All we have to do is pin our sleeve into place on the curtain. Since it's already doubled, we just cut it out one time and we will get two pieces. You just need to set those aside to use later on in the project. Once your bodice pieces are cut out, you need to mark your dart placements. I always do this by placing a dot at the top of my dart and two dots at the bottom, connecting them with the line. And then I fold my bodice piece in half right sides together and pin along the dart markings. After those are pinned, you can take it to your machine and sew them into place. Now, when you are sewing darts, you always want to start sewing at the widest section of the dart, which is typically at the bottom, and sew to the very tip top. This is going to make the darts lay more flat on your body. Now, once we complete sewing all of the darts, we're going to take it over to our iron and we're going to press all of them flat. This is a really important step. All of the darts are going to be pressed away from the center. So in the front, they're going to be pressed away towards the side seams and the same thing for the back. We're also going to press the side seams open. Once all of our darts are pressed, we're going to put our bodice lining and bodice right sides together and pin along the top, which we are going to sew. After we sew across the top, we are going to also sew the armholes and once that is all completed, we're going to turn it inside out and press it to give it a really finished edge along the top. Now the reason we sewed our bodice right sides together along the top and then flipped it right side out is that way all of the seams will actually be hidden on the inside of our bodice. We're going to press that so that it lays really flat and then I'm just going to go ahead and fit it to make sure everything is laying as it should. Now when I'm done with that, I'm going to take my middle ruffle section, I'm going to go over to my serger and serge the top edge so that there's no fraying. I'm doing this before I gather it just to make sure that there are no raw edges. I'm also going to take the top ruffle section and pin it to the top of my skirt. Then I'm going to serge those two pieces together so that they don't shift on me before I baste it and gather it into place. And once that is completed, I'm actually going to stitch the back of the skirt together before I gather all of the different panels. 
After I sew the seam into the back of my skirt to make it a full skirt, I'm just going to go ahead and use my serger to finish those edges. Now you don't have to serge your edges, this is just an optional step that I do. Now I'm going in with my basting stitch, which is the widest stitch length on your sewing machine. Make sure that you don't back stitch and you leave tails at the end of those seams so that you can pull the thread to gather it. I always do two lines of basting right under each other and then gather those together. It creates a much stronger gather. Um, I also tie my edges together before I start to gather all of my panel sections. That way I don't bust any of my thread. And this is the tedious process. Um, that is not my favorite part of designs, but gathers always make for really pretty designs at the end. So I will take it for now. All right, now that we have finished gathering the middle ruffle panel section of our skirt, we are going to go in and pin that into place. So this is being pinned at the very middle of our skirt. So I went ahead and measured from the top of my skirt down to where I wanted my ruffle placement to be, and it was about nine inches. So I just measure that and pin it into place. We wanna make sure that this is even all the way around so that our ruffles look symmetrical from the outside and one side is not longer than the other. After these are pinned in the place, we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and sew them down and you want to make sure that you turn your sewing machine off of a basting stitch and put it back on your normal stitch width and length. Now that the middle ruffle is pinned into place, we're just going to sew that onto the center circumference of the skirt. And once that ruffle is sewn into place, we are going to start gathering the waist of the skirt. Now, as I gather the waist of the skirt, I'm going to pay attention and make sure that it fits the actual size of my waist, so I will take measurements along the way, since this will be sewn to the bottom of my bodice. Now that the waist of the skirt is gathered, I'm going to fit it to my dress form just to make sure that it is the correct size and that all of the seams are matching up, since my dress form is pretty close to my actual sizing. Now for sleeves, we are going to need to make sure that we finish or hem the bottom of our sleeves. There's multiple ways you can do this, but for me, I put on my rolled hem foot and I'm just going to do a really tiny rolled hem along the bottom edge of my sleeves. That way it doesn't make my sleeves stiff and they still have that ruffly effect. This is a super easy trick. If you have a rolled hem foot, I would encourage you to use it. And this is what the rolled hem looks like on the edge of my sleeves. After that, we're just going to take our serger and serge the very top section of our sleeve to make sure we finish those edges so there's not any raw edges when we go in together and sew it to the armholes of our dress. After that, I'm going to play around with my sleeve placement to see how they look. And I'm also using these thin bias straps that are going to be part of the sleeve as well. But before I do that, I need to mark where I place my gathers on my sleeve to go put in my basting stitches. After my basting stitches are put into place, I'm also going to sew my sleeves together. And this is going to be the seam that gets pinned right under my arm on my dress. Now the sleeves for this dress are a little bit different since they lay straight on the shoulder and there's not actually an armhole to sew them into, so I had to play around with them for a little bit to figure out how I could best gather them and lay them. I also have this bias strap that the gathers of my sleeve are going to be encased in, so I had to make sure that that all laid properly and was sewn all the way around my sleeve. Okay, so part of my design process is always trying things on as I go. Obviously, the skirt, I really don't need to do that. And yes, I do have a mannequin, but mannequins, unless you are exactly a size like 8 or 10 or 6 or whatever your size is, the mannequin probably is not going to fit you as accurately as yourself. So, I'm fitting the bodice to myself just to check how everything is. I know that it fits around my waist really well, but I wanted to check and see if I need to lengthen these sleeves or raise them. And I realized that they need to be lengthened because the bust point is all the way up here and I need it to be more right here. So I actually need to go and lengthen this 
fabric kind of vise that I added. Um, but after I do that, it should fit really well. So these are what the sleeves end up looking like once they're pinned into place. This is why having a mannequin is so nice because you can actually figure out all the logistics of something before you actually sew it together. Okay, so I lengthen the bias for the straps to be 11 inches. I have no clue what they were before. So now it fits much better and lower. Now that all of my sleeves are pinned where they should, I'm going to sew them into place and the process for this is making sure to sew the sleeves under the arm section of my bodice and then also sew down that bias over the gathers of my sleeve. That way it will kind of encase the entire sleeve around the fake armhole. Since my sleeves technically have bias straight over the shoulder, which kind of creates that fake armhole, I also have to make sure to sew those straps down into place so that they don't shift. Now I'm going to press up the bottom ends of my bodice half an inch um, for both my lining and the outside of my bodice, and that is going to encase the gathers of my skirt, which will then be sewn to connect my bodice to my skirt and bring the dress together. Now the reason I sew my bodice for my skirt this way is that the bodice will actually sandwich all of the gathers inside of itself so all of the seams will be hidden and the inside of your dress will lie nice and flat along you. So this is a great tip when sewing a dress. Now I'm going to sew a straight line over my pin markings to connect the bodice to the skirt. And then after this all we have to do is add the zipper. Now that my dress is almost done since all of the pieces are sewn together, I'm just going to fit this on my dress form. Now if you don't have a dress form, you can fit it to yourself. But this step is very crucial because it's going to help you to figure out how you need to place your zipper to get the best fit so that it's not too loose and that it's not too tight. So that's what I'm doing here. I put pins along the center back and then I put markings for where I want my zipper placement to go. Okay, so I am one of those sewers who's constantly trying things on as I'm sewing them. Um, I have tried things on fully pinned before and then you try to get out of them and it's dangerous. But anyways, um, I am trying this on just to make sure that everything is fitting as it should because my next step and my last step is adding the zipper. Now for this dress, I decided to use a white invisible zipper, so I just need to press my teeth of my zipper away from the center and then pin that down into place along the markings that I created when I fit my dress to my dress form. After these are pinned into place along the left side, I'm going to sew the left side and then I will pin my right side into place and sew that. Now if you've never used an invisible zipper before, there are a lot of great tutorials on YouTube that explain the process. It's not as hard as it looks. Here is the finished dress. I am super excited with how this turned out. It doesn't even look like a bed skirt and it's hard to believe that this was once a bed skirt because it's just so frilly and flowy and honestly when I wear this I can't stop twirling. My style aesthetic right now is definitely very romantic and ladylike and this dress definitely fits into that style so I'm really excited with how it turned out.
Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you were inspired and also subscribe to my channel so you can get the latest updates on new videos and tutorials.